Ahoy there folks, I'm Captain Benzi and welcome to another developer Q&A video for Eve Echoes. This week we have four questions and only one of them is blood curdlingly rage inducing, so that's nice I guess. Now if you don't know what the developer Q&A series is all about, or if you'd like to learn how you could win a month of basic or combo omega, stick around, otherwise I'll put a timestamp on screen now so you can skip ahead to the meat of the matter, and if you do skip ahead, please leave a like on the video, it really does help me. Anyway, if you want to know what the developer Q&A series is about, essentially every week the developers of the game, NetEase, take four questions, or a series of questions I guess, posed by you the community, they answer those questions, then post the response to both the official Eve Echoes Twitter account, Facebook page, Discord, and it is posted in the game as well, if you go into your ship's AI system you can look for Q&A there. I go through these questions every week because I think I can add a lot of nuance to this. Because I'm so ingrained in the dev q and a and I talk to the developers a lot and I read the Discord AMAs, I watch the roundtables and I make a lot of notes on this kind of thing. There's a lot of nuance that I think I can add to this, where as a question I often see on the official community Discord, people saying, oh, they, they've told us nothing with that question. I'm like, actually, if you watch my video, I can tell you that what they say ties in with this, 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 and this, which gives us a much bigger picture of what's coming forward. So that's why I do this each week and I hope you enjoy it. It can just be listened to as a podcast. Now, if you're sticking around here because you want to know how to win a month of Omega, there are two different ways. Technically, three, I guess. If you have a question for the developers, there is a link in the description of this video that will take you through to a Google document. Ask you a question. If it's one that's chosen, you'll win a month of basic Omega, in addition to getting an answer to the question and, you know, getting featured in one of my videos, which is cool, right? I, I think that's cool. Anyway, <laughs> the other way is if you fancy getting a month of Combo Omega. I give three people every week a month of Combo Omega. Now to begin with that, all you need to do is to comment on any of my Eve Echoes YouTube videos, that will give you a chance of winning a month's Combo Omega there, and on my Discord I give away two Combo Omega months every single week. So get on that Discord linked in the description down below, start the conversation, it's selected randomly from posts. So if you just join my Discord and then sit there in silence, ain't no way you're winning. If you join my Discord and start talking, you're in with multiple chances of winning, right? Anyway, that's all the messaging out of the way. Hit like, subscribe if you haven't already. Otherwise, let's jump into the developer Q&A for the week of the 19th to the 25th of July. My goodness, over halfway through this year already, and with the August anniversary just around the corner. So question number one. On the corporation supply approval applications, would it be possible to make the applicator's name a link to the character or a way that we can start a chat with the character to discuss the request? At the moment, you've got to copy the character name or search for them through your corp member list to contract them if you want to query their application and it's a pain. Really? I think there is an easier way than that. An easy way to access messages or look at their details would be great. Now, Cloud responds, on the application review page, tap the applicant's avatar to open the business card, then tap the send message button to contact them. So here we have a actually really good question on one hand and a really daft one on the other. I'm not attacking the people asking the questions, by the way, just the questions themselves. So please don't get upset if it's your question and I rip it apart. I don't intend to attack you as a person. I'm merely commenting on the question. So the way this is a really good question is because clearly if someone's asking this, it means they don't know how this works. So if you tap on someone's avatar, not the name, the avatar, then it always brings up sort of their business card, which you can then go to send message, add to contacts, things like this. You can also go into their corporation, see their corporation leaders, contact them, all through that same chain. It's a really useful tool. Apparently, not many people seem to know about this, so excellent question, because it gives us the opportunity to sort of find this out. Bit of a daft question, because it was so easily answered, and it's taken up, well, you can see, a lot of dev Q&A time for a question that could have just been dealt with if you'd asked someone who knew how to do it. Now, I'm not having a go there. I think bringing some sort of, you know, a, a, a bit of exposure to how to do this is pretty cool. I'm all for that. Now you know. If you tap on someone's face in the game, it brings up their business card. Yeah, I'd like to see, like, the actual character names have that same functionality, but I get that also small screens, fat fingers, if everything becomes a tappable space, it's a constant thing of opening windows accidentally, closing them, die. <laughs> There's so much going on there, right? I, I understand. I understand. Decent enough question, now we all know. Moving on then to question number two. 
With all the different medals players have equipped, can it be possible to view the details on them? I can see them but have no idea what they're for and I'd like to know what they are. Doesn't it actually do this? If you tap on it, it will tell you like a brief paragraph of what it was, but it's a pretty much a lore description, like there's that one for when the Stargates closed, and we know that that's because there was a bug shortly after launch where every single Stargate stopped working, and thus people suddenly got trapped in Nullsec. Hilarious as it was, they gave medals out to everyone who basically survived that ordeal. Now, I don't know if you can actually see this from someone else's page, because I've never actually checked. I know what most of the medals do anyway, I'm a big fan of the medal system, so if I see a medal, like even the mini icon medal, I know what it means, right? Um, if it doesn't, then yeah, absolutely, I think that, that you should be able to have that information, see why people are displaying that medal so proudly, and Cloud does agree, we're working on some optimizations for medals and personal business card display. Good. I think the business card, the character sheet, whatever you want to call it, is actually a really underutilized piece of information in the game. It's a really powerful tool that allows for both personalization in regards to the player and information to anyone who wants to tap on it. So added functionality, I'm all for it. I really like what they did to the corporation screen. Um, yeah, I had to learn how to navigate that all over again, but the fact that it's all there now and a lot easier to navigate once you get to grips with it, I'm all for. Quality of life changes like that are pretty awesome. Anyway, moving on now to question number three. Hi, are there any plans to implement bots, AI, into the faction war games to limit the waiting time for a match? Okay, I'm going to pause here and say that this is a great example of a question with good intention, bad game design, but we'll come back to that. Sometimes, me and my friends, we have to wait for 10 minutes for one game, thank you. And yeah, I get it, 10 minutes to wait for a faction war games thing when there's only two hours of it, you've got 120 minutes, that's, you know, almost 10% of your entire opportunity to play the game just sitting in station staring at a screen that does nothing. Let's see what Cloud says, then I'll add my own thoughts. Thank you for your feedback, says Cloud, but at present we're focusing on optimizing the gameplay of faction war games and increasing participation rather than adding bots. And yeah, that's the way it should be, and that's ultimately why I don't want to pull the question apart, I'm not calling anyone stupid here, seriously I'm not, because I get it, people ask this kind of thing, you know, you sit there and say, well there's a long wait time, couldn't the game just fill the remaining slots with bots, that would make it faster. Except you're missing a couple of key points there. One, just rushing into a game with bots is not necessarily good. Bot AI is freaking difficult, right? Look at what bots are like in NPC encounters. You know, when you go up against NPCs in a standard encounter, how they fly there. You want that in faction war games? Like, there's a lot of development time that has to be put into implementing bots and AI and actually getting that tweaked to the point where it not only is it, you know, good, but it needs to be scalable. Because what if your team has a ton of bots and the enemy team has a decent amount of players? And what if your players are absolute trash and you're filled with crappy bots against a team of, a of actual players who really know what they're doing? If we assume that you get a situation where you've got, you know, two teams and half of Team A is bots and half of Team B is bots, what if Team A genuinely has better players and Team B has worse players? Those bots then need to be scalable to make that fair, right? To help Team B stand a fighting chance. Because if it's basically half of your team is bots on both sides, and then the other half is just good players, compared to not so good players, you, you see the issue here. The bots need to be also a balancing factor, so there's a lot that goes into coding bot AI for this kind of game. There's a reason why, for example, um, a lot of games nowadays are using machine learning for their bots, and it still takes time. A lot of games load up and the bots are either broken and powerful, or they're just absolutely useless. That, that's a difficult balance. And I'm glad to see that the focus, rather than coding bot AI, which is just patching over the ultimate issue that not many people are playing faction war games right now, the better thing to do is to look at faction war games and say, why aren't people playing it much right now? And to fix that instead. It's kind of like sitting there saying, you know, well, why, 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 why is this hurting? Why, why is this person in so much pain? or should I just give them some paracetamol? No, j j get in there, find out why they're painful, Cl you know, sort that out if they've got a broken foot or ankle. Uh, where am I going with this? You know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying. They are treating the cause rather than the symptom, which I really like. That said, though, with faction war games, I would love to see that that big faction war game screen that you're in a queue can be minimized. Maybe it locks you out of undocking, but 
you can minimize and still like do stuff in your hangar and talk in chat and things like that until the queue pops because yeah staring at your phone for 10 minutes when it's just a screen with a clock on it is not great you know i get that Question number four then, here it comes, the big one that made Benzi super angry when we read it this morning. Are there any plans to introduce a counter similar to interdiction modules that uncloak any covert ops within 10 kilometers? I am going to stop this right here. This is a terrible, 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 terrible idea that would break the game clean in half. They say this would add an additional aspect to gate camps and protection, even requires to have more ships in the fleet to create a camp. No, it doesn't. It requires two freaking ships. You have an interdictor bubble and then you have a decloaking bubble and suddenly you can catch every single ship in the game, including covert ops ships, which are literally designed to avoid gate camps. Like, why? Why? Just stop and think about this for a second. You have come up with a suggestion to a perceived problem. You, ha you have announced that you think there's a problem, but haven't explained why there's a problem. And instead, you've just jumped in with something that, oh, I think it should be this. Stop and think about this. You now have a, a, a standard interdictor ship. Call it, you know, your rupture interdictor or a thrasher interdictor or whatever that drops a bubble. Now, no ship can warp out of it except interceptors, right? Cool. Now, you add another bubble on top of that that also cancels all cloaks. Okay, now that means anyone in something like a Wreath 2, a Badger 2, a Nereus 2, or a Bestower 2, who is cloaked and going through that gate camp, or a Probe Covert Ops, or an Astero, or any other ship that is using a Covert Ops cloak, boom, they are decloaked. They are now visible. They can't warp and they can't cloak. So what is the point in a Covert Ops cloak at this point? Look, you have literally negated the Covert Ops cloak, which, and the Covert Ops cloak is the official counter to a bubble, right? Because if you land in a bubble when you're cloaked, you can just swim through it and head to the gate either way. If you're, you know, you've jumped a gate and you're in a bubble, you can use the cloak to get out of the bubble, then warp. If you've landed on the edge of a bubble, you just have to, try, you know, fly your way through to the center to the gate, jump it and keep going. That's really fun. Now, to take that away because, oh, someone's got a ship. And I know what you're saying. Oh, well, it would only be a pulse. Yes, in EVE Online, interdictors can launch what are referred to as your interdiction probes, um, which are the bubbles that we know. But there are also, interdictor destroyers can also launch what are called Webifier probes, also known colloquially as Wubbles. Yes, really, Wubbles. Um, these are things that basically they launch and then they explode like an interdictor sphere does already, but it's a quick pulse that applies a stasis webifier effect to every ship there. This is really cool because it actually helps with any ship that is moving through. It helps to handle, if you think there's a covert ops ship nearby, it slows them right the hell down because covert ops ships obviously can't be using propulsion modules when they are cloaked other than the first activation. So they tend to be moving fairly slowly anyway. And if you then like put a web of fire effect on them for 30 seconds, oh my goodness, that takes ages, but it doesn't just absolutely counter. A good covert ops pilot can still maneuver their way through and deal with that. Your suggestion here is a quick fire off the cuff, back of a cigarette packet, idea that just breaks the game. It negates the entire point of a covert ops ship to freaking well begin with. And if you negate a covert ops ship's purpose, what you're actually saying is, I think uh, interceptors should be even more powerful. You may not actually be thinking that, but that is what you've said. Because in this situation, the covert ops cloak, which is designed to help you get through these bubbles, is now useless because a second ship can just click its fingers and miraculously decloak you. Oh, but we'll put a timer on it. They can only do it once a minute. Cool, so now you have two of those ships. You can now do it once every 30 seconds. You've got three of those ships. You can now do it once every 20 seconds. You've got four of those ships. You can do it once every 15 seconds. Gate camps are not a hard thing to do. And if you're a multi-boxer, a destroyer or something that can have these is not a difficult thing to scale into. I just think uh, a decloaking thing here, what problem are you actually trying to solve here? You're saying, oh, we don't want covert ops ships coming through our gate camps. Then freaking learn how to stop covert ops ships because I'm getting bored of gate camps being so easy to run. Oh, look, you've got three ships with some drones. Oh no, that's so difficult. I'm literally going to slow boat through and chat to you while I do it because I find that shit hilarious. Pardon my French. Ultimately, the point I'm getting at here is there are ways to do this. Drop some canisters. Drop some canisters that will cause me to decloak as I get closer. Have some more ships in the gate camps. Yo, it's not 
difficult. What you're looking for here is a way to counter a type of ship that is ultimately designed to counter the situation that you have created, and you're just not doing it properly. Like, you're not doing it properly. Gate camps are so ridiculously easy to run because people just drop a bubble, sit on the gate, sit on the gate and then just stare at their screen hoping for something to appear. They don't even realize there's a covert ops ship on grid, and it's just embarrassing at this point. Like, fix yourself before you try to fix the game. Now, the worrying part of this, which, which is where the oh no, here we go again title comes from, we have plans to add a gameplay about cloak and anti-cloak, says Cloud, which may be modules, ships, or structures, but the specific plan is to be determined. If it's anti-cloaking modules or anti-cloaking ships, G, T, F, Oh, that is a hard counter to one of the only things that is currently working fairly well in the game. Like, you have a bubble, I have a covert ops. I can counter your bubble and fly through it, but even then, you can still catch me if you're freaking smart enough about it. Having a big red I win button that just decloaks everything, like, oh look, there's, there's a guy in local, he appeared a few seconds ago, um, I haven't seen him, but... We know he's coming up the pipe towards us, therefore he's probably in a covert ops ship. Let me just press the button. Oh, there he is, lock and destroy. Where's the fun in that, you... Oh, <laughs> it makes me so angry. So, anti-cloaking modules, anti-cloaking ships, no. Get that out of here. That is not good game design. You are now creating something that is basically a dump clump counter. Structures, yeah, I get it. So having a structure anchored to a citadel that you can pulse and reveal people who are cloaked, yeah, that I'm all for because it's system defense. Something that can be transported around the entire universe, though, no. No, thank you. Go away with that. Thank you. Bye bye. What I honestly think, if look, I get it, there are problems with covert ops cloaks, with people setting up cameras, so to speak. You know, a covert ops destroyer, uh, not covert ops destroyer, sorry, like a, a hound or a probe covert ops that just sits in a system, um, covert ops cloaked the entire time, watching everything that goes in and out of there. I get it. That's an issue, but no, that's not the way. The first thing I would say as well is I understand that the Covert Ops meta is a thing that the Estero and the Stratios are very dangerous hunters because they can decloak and instantly lock and all this kind of thing, right? So, bear with me here. Full video on this one coming, but why not add Covert Ops cloaking skills? Not everyone can use Covert Ops cloaks, you've got to skill into it to have the ability to even equip them. Then, the, the you know, they have very large abilities that the skills are going to reduce and bring back to what we currently have. I'm a Covert Ops main, by the way. You will rarely see me undock a ship that does not have a Covert Ops cloak fitted to it, because that's the playstyle I really enjoy. And the crazy thing is, I can do that on anything. I can be a rupture pilot and have a few covert op, you know, have have a Celestis, and suddenly I've got a covert op ship. I can be primarily a Vexer pilot or, you know, a, a prophecy pilot, and suddenly I can just grab an arbitrator and I can covert ops cloak, right? And I can do all these crazy things with it. I don't have to spend any skills on that ability. There's no choice there. I don't have to make the decision of do I want to be a covert ops pilot or do I want to be a standard cruiser pilot? Do I want to go heavier into my weaponry or do I want to spend skill points on cloaks. By having to actually spend skill points making cloaks viable, you make a choice that you want to dedicate part of the slab of skill points that you have to that particular thing. I will do a full video breaking this down, but that to me adds choice. Yeah, that doesn't fix the whole thing of uh, like people sitting in a system cloaked as a camera. That's where cloaking destabilization comes in. Give a cloak a 15 minute destabilization timer. If a cloak is activated for longer than 15 minutes, that ship becomes scannable. It's that simple. It is really that simple. We don't need fuel bunging up cargo holds on uh, covert ops ships um, in order to run a cloak. You don't need some crazy ship or module that can decloak stuff because that will just break covert ops. All you need to do is add a destabilization timer and maybe some skills. That's literally it. It is that freaking easy. So, again, what problem were you trying to solve with this question? And think about how your, you know, your supposed answer actually affects things, because that was such a painful answer to read. It's like, I don't actually even know what the problem is, but here's something that would utterly negate an entire class of ships and playstyle just because reasons. 
Think about your questions, please, folks. Think about your questions. Think about game design for literally longer than it takes you to type the message. This smacks of someone who just went, I don't like the fact that my gate camp can be, you know, that uh, people in covert ops ships can run away. Basically, this is someone who's got annoyed that I've run a fully laden wreath two through them. I've linked it in chat and just gone, sorry guys, better luck next time. Improve your gate camps before you try to change the game, especially if you're gonna do it in such a dumbass way as this. Anyway, <laughs> let's not get too ranty. Ranty Benzie's getting super ranty these days. Anyway, folks, that's it for today. If you've got any comments you want to leave down below, please do let me know your opinions. I would love to hear your opinions. Quick point on that, though. I've had some very aggressive people in my comment section later. I love you all, seriously. I had one guy who came into the comment section and was like, can I play this game on PC? And someone went, well, that's just EVE Online. He's like, no, I don't want to play EVE Online. I like EVE Echoes. I've got friends here. I really enjoy this game. And the immediate response was, well, I think this game's terrible. And here's a full wall of text as to why it's terrible. That's not an opinion. You're not sitting there voicing an opinion. And then when I sit there and say, hey, look, don't be a dick in the comment section. Don't get angry at me that, oh, I'm just giving my opinion on an opinion piece. No, you're not. You're just shoving your negativity down someone's throat when they're actually trying to enjoy the game. There's a difference. Having an opinion is like, hmm, I think that covert ops cloak ships are, you know, too powerful. So I think that we need to do something about that. In fact, that's not even really an opinion. The opinion would be, I think Covert Ops cloak ships are too powerful, and here's why. Like, you can't have an opinion without evidence. Otherwise, my opinion is that the sky is luminescent green and tastes of cherry. There's no evidence for that, and I think we as a society, I don't want to go too much on to rant here, have reached that point where, actually, everyone's been told your opinion is valid no matter how ridiculous it is. This is why we have flat earthers. It takes literally five minutes to, in your, be in your back garden, prove that the earth is round. Like, it, it's not a difficult thing to do. Yet we have people who are like, oh, I believe the Earth's flat and you can't say otherwise. Yeah, I really can, because I've got evidence. You've just got crazy pills. Anyway, folks, thank you for watching right the way through to the end on this one. Please don't get too angry at me in the comment section down below. I am just trying to be funny, and I know it sometimes comes across as a bit rude and abrasive, but hey, that's just who I am. Thanks for watching, folks. Happy sailing, and see you in New Eden!